Yes, you read the title right. Logic Pro for iPad 2.2 now has the ability to learn controls from your MIDI keyboard and use them right here in Logic. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how it works. Let's go. If you'd like to learn a heap more about creating, recording, and releasing your best music with Logic Pro and all the brand new features in Logic Pro 2.2, check out the other videos in the description. And while you're down there, you can check out my gear guide for all my recommendations of what gear to use because you will need a MIDI keyboard or controller of some sort to use this feature. To access Learn MIDI, you'll need to tap in the top right and tap on Learn MIDI. You can also add Learn MIDI to your control bar. If you tap in the top right again and go Customize Control Bar, here under Other, you'll have Learn MIDI. If you turn that on, you'll have the Learn MIDI button there available all the time. Here's how to start learning those MIDI commands from your keyboard into Logic Pro. First, we're going to tap on the Learn MIDI button and you'll see that it's already started if it hasn't got that stop learning there, just tap it and then tap start learning. And it's now going to be looking for controls that it can actually map. And you'll know what you can control because it has this blue dotted outline around it. And it's everything from your transport controls to your volume faders and even your plugin controls. I'm going to show you how to set up a few of those right now. Let's start with something simple and pretty common, which is using a filter here in our channel EQ plugin. So you can see I've set up a low pass filter here. Let's tap to set up our MIDI learn. What we can now do is grab this parameter and slide it left and right. And you can see there that it's got the low cut frequency added. If I now grab the knob here and turn it on my keyboard like magic, it's going to assign that control. Now all I need to do is hit stop learning. And now when I turn the control to the left and the right, it's gonna control this filter on my sound. allowing me to record and add that effect in real time. You can also assign your controls to any of your plugins or even the Alchemy synth. So you can see here with MIDI Learn On, we can assign it to all of these knobs. So if I wanted to set up my knobs to match these knobs, all I need to do is twiddle that one and twiddle that one and it's going to find the right knob. We tap in this one, and then we twiddle this one and it's going to add these. So you can see those events, CC70, 71, and 72, and as we go through these, all we need to do is tap and then twiddle, and they're going to be added in there. We can hit stop learning, and now we can actually use these knobs as we play in real time. Let's hit stop learning again. You can also adjust the settings here if you want to change the way the knobs or the pads or whatever you're performing with behave. If we tap on the arrow there, you can see here it's got the details and the name there, the MIDI control. We can change the value to be either absolute or we can make it relative or a toggle for a button. You can change the ranges in there as well. I'll be going into this in more detail in my deep dive video, so make sure you subscribe to the channel because we'll be looking at the learn MIDI function in a lot more detail in videos to come. What about MIDI controllers that have transport controls like your stop, your play and your record? Well, yes, you can use those too. Let's tap on MIDI learn again. Let's first hit the record button here and then tap the record button on our keyboard. Now we have a problem here. You can see there it's brought up a little message there and that's because particular keyboards like this one actually send note information instead of actual MIDI data. So to fix this, all we need to do is tap on these three dots and turn this one off. Ignore MIDI notes while learning because we want to actually be able to use these buttons. Let's press record now. And you can see there, it's assigned it to note 95. So some MIDI keyboards, you may need to turn that off because it's not using MIDI events, it's actually using notes to send those commands. Let's tap on play and hit the play button and tap on the stop slash return to the start of track button and press that button. Hit stop learning and what you'll see there is these ones that have the dark blue outline with the little blue arrow means that there has been a MIDI event assigned to them. So you can quickly see which ones you've added buttons or knobs or dials to. And now instead of having to use our mouse or our keyboard when we're recording, we can just hit the record button on our keyboard here. And stop. And play back our audio as well.
Let's show you one more, and this one might be my favorite. If you ever wanted to be able to use a volume fader on your controller to control your volume faders here, well, you can do that now with MIDI Learn. Let's once again jump in to MIDI Learn here, make sure that we have started learning there, and then what we can actually do is grab any volume fader here on any of our tracks and move it up and down, and then grab our volume fader over here and move it up and down as well. That's going to assign that to that volume fader. And you might be thinking, why would I want it to be just that one? Well, here's where this next step comes in handy. What we can do now is actually tap to jump into the settings of this one. And at the top here, where it's got volume on these drums, if we tap on that, we can actually change it from pinned to that track to the focused track. So with that change in place, if we come out of there and close out of MIDI assignments, now whichever track we're on, that will be the volume fader that this will actually control. Oh, and you may have noticed there that when I selected on one of these, it wasn't moving until I went all the way to the maximum or the minimum. So sometimes you'll need to turn your knobs or your dials or your switches all the way to maximum or minimum, and then it will lock in place and you'll be able to use it to move your volume faders up and down. And does it work out here? Yeah, it sure does. So you can use this on your mixer panel here as well as in your overall track view. Now there's a heap more you can do with the Learn MIDI function. You can assign it to a whole bunch of different plugins and controls. In fact, I'd love to hear from you about some of the cool ideas you've already got in your minds for what you're going to create, how you're going to map your controllers and how it's going to improve your workflow in Logic Pro for iPad. If you'd like to learn a heap more about Logic Pro for iPad, including all of the new features, you can check out my complete overview video that's on the screen right now, as well as videos about all the new features in Logic Pro for iPad iPad 2.2. I'll see you over there.